Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video has been voted for by my Patreon members. Thanks, guys. This is the video about the Angel of Mons, a supernatural phenomenon that rose out of the First World War. So we're going to have a little look, first of all, a bit of a background look into the Battle of Mons. So the Battle of Mons, August 1914. What a show. The British mobilised their British Expeditionary Force, 100,000 men, on the 4th of August. Their Commander-in-Chief, uh, General Sir John French. By the 17th, they're actually in France, moving up into Belgium. It was actually the Germans attacking Belgium that dragged the British in. They are going to go straight for the German army. 240,000 men coming the other way under General von Kluck. It's a German steamroller. But the British, together with the French and the Belgians, are going to push the Germans all the way back through. Well, that's what they thought. In fact, Sir John French didn't know what was really going on. And a British pilot, bless him, a young man in his aeroplane. Now think about that, 1914. Aeroplanes are still a novelty. And this guy is flying around trying to find the Germans and he finds them. And it sounds like he's found the main body of the German army on the battlefield of Waterloo. Now, it's interesting because the last time the British faced these kind of odds, 100,000 stick, 240,000, was actually at the Battle of Waterloo. Hey, just a little bit of information there. He flies back. He lands his kite, as it were. He gets to headquarters. Sir, important information. Oh, what is it? I found the German army, sir. Oh, where, where were they? Battlefield of Waterloo, sir, just outside of Brussels. So you fly an aeroplane, do you? Now, can you imagine this conversation going on? Yes, sir. Do they go very fast? Yes, sir. Is it cold up there? Well, it can be, sir. Does the wind blow into your face? Yes, sir. Could you have imagined those German soldiers? Could you have miscalculated? They dismissed the intelligence. They could have had the upper hand there. They could have dug in and waited, but they didn't. They pursued north. When they get to the other side of the industrial town, the coaling town of Mons, the British Army have to dig in. News is now rushing in. The Dragoon Guards are sent out on patrol. British soldiers, the Royal Fusiliers, the Middlesex Regiment, they all dig in on this side of the canal. Bridges are going to be blown up. This is all this is going to be organised. And the Dragoons actually find a patrol of Ulan Lancers, the, uh, the German Lancers there, and they charge after them. And they engage them. A point of sword. The first German soldier killed by the British was killed in this attack. And the British officer who killed him says, he died like a gentleman. He was killed by the sword. And that officer wouldn't, the British officer wouldn't clean his sword until he was told because he kept saying, look, this is the first blood to me. Well, the first blood to the Germans was going to be very shortly. So what happens next is quite incredible. The British army dug in, they're going to stop the Germans. The Germans believed that the British had got massed machine guns. Well, they hadn't. They got two machine guns per battalion. A battalion could be 600 men up to 1,000. What they had was their short magazine, the Enfield rifle. This is mine. And a Colonel McMahon had actually trained his Royal Fusiliers. The British army, he was in charge of the musketry school at Hyde how to fire this in the mad minute. He had trained his troops in musketry and he was really committed to getting his troops to be able to fire 15 aimed shots a minute. Now I've done this on the range with this rifle and I'll tell you, wow, but you have to train. I'll show you how they did it. So you have a round in the breech. As soon as you put it forward, you're holding it in the aim. Pull the trigger with your little finger. As long as you hold the rifle in the aim, 
or even rest it. And these soldiers were good at it. The other thing about these British soldiers, many of them had served abroad before. Many of them were your old sweats. And they were used to engaging the enemy face to face. But imagine facing a bayonet. A guard! Great, isn't it? I hope I made somebody jump because I like doing that. So the Germans attack all along the canal and British soldiers open fire. Their rapid fire, 15 aim shots a minute, plus two Vickers heavy machine guns per battalion, that's per 600 men, 600 bullets per minute, plus away they go. But the Germans didn't know what was waiting for them. And they threw their might at the British. Now the British couldn't hold on. The Germans, there are so many of them, they're getting across the canal that they were the British were defending on the north side of Mons. The Germans are pushing round on their flanks. So the British have got to pull back. It's called the retreat from Mons. And this is where our story really begins. Now I've marched, as a British soldier, I've marched. Uh, I think about 25 miles is my maximum I've ever marched with all my kit on. And... Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> Any soldier who has marched like that will tell you the same thing. At the end of it, your feet are on fire, your shoulders are killing you, and you shimp, moan, grouse, complain, call it what you will. And the British Army is falling back in this uniform with 70 pound of kit on their back. The cavalry with their horses, they're out there. Everybody falling back, holding. Guys are left behind to hold the Germans, then they've got to catch up. And this went on for days. Short of water, short of rations. And some of the soldiers, the British soldiers, began to see strange things. So on the retreat from Mons, there are eyewitness accounts to some of the strange happenings that was going on. This is a massive, protracted battle. And just to let you know, I've made a little diorama of um, British soldiers behind a wall. I took this from an actual um, picture from the First World War. So we'll, we'll have a look at that and you'll see how the British are behind cover and the Germans are advancing. But then the British would have to move. Stand, fight, move again. Day after day, those 25 miles a day. But some of these British soldiers had been called into the colours, had been called up. They were reservists. And they've been issued with new boots. Now, British Army boots, they're a real pain. I've got one here. This is one of your reproduction British Army First World War boots. Studded. But this one has marched all over the Somme, Ypres. You tell it. I've, you mentioned the First World Western Front. I've marched in these boots. And they're worn in. But if you have them brand new, they'll rip you to pieces. So many a British soldier has thrown off his boots and he's hobbling along with bleeding feet. The state of the British. When the French witnessed the state of the British Army, they said we were finished. We were broken. Well, I'll tell you something about us Brits. We might look exhausted. We might have our back against the wall, but we ain't finished. And time and time again, the Germans found out this to be true. But then strange things were happening. This is the 26th of August, so in the middle of the battle there. 568th anniversary of the Battle of Cressy. And strange lights appear in the sky. Some men saw angels. Others saw a great figure on a horse. I've got him here. St. George charging forward. Others saw bowmen of Cressy shooting arrows into the Germans. I've known about this since I was a kid. Sat on my granddad's knee and he told me all about the Angel of Mons. Wow, what a subject. Well, what was it? Well, Frank Richards from the second Royal Welsh Fusiliers he um, witnessed the whole thing. But he says this, we were so exhausted through lack of water and 
tired. The, the men next to me says, oh, look, Dick, look over there. It's a castle. He says, but when I looked, there was nothing. Men were hallucinating all around. But there's a piece from the German side as well, where a German soldier said we got the British beat. There was just a thin line of them and we were going to take them out. When thousands of British soldiers appeared behind the thin line, so many glinting, shining, that we stopped and pulled back. So what was going on? What were these supernatural apparitions? Bowman from Cressy, St. George, Angel. One soldier described her as being slim with her wings folded on her back. These are details, aren't they? And the young German soldier who saw British soldiers advancing behind the thin line of Brits in front of him. Well, some French officers dismissed it. They said, yes. This time of year in northern France and southern Belgium, you have the Aurora Borealis, the northern lights. And they were indeed dancing around. Uh, a British chaplain, Padre from the army, he says, ah, I saw the lights. And then I realised what they were. The British have brought up searchlights because the Germans were advancing of a night time and the searchlights were going all across the battlefield and bouncing and that kind of thing. Well... Was it just the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights? Was it the reflection of the searchlights? Or just the imagination of exhausted soldiers? Well, there is a horror writer. Arthur Macken reckons he wrote the story about the Angel of Mons and the Bowman appearing. In fact, uh, a picture based on his story appeared in the Times Supplement. Uh, in 1915, showing British Tommies fighting. So was it all in our imagination? Well, I don't know. But I'll tell you this, you go to Mons, there's not a lot there. Nice little town. But go to the Commonwealth War Grave, saint symphorien It's the most atmospheric place I have ever visited on the entire Western Front, that's for sure. There are British and Germans buried in that cemetery. The first British soldier killed and the last of ours. He was Canadian, are buried almost on the same row. But Lieutenant Dees, he's buried there. He was awarded posthumously, of course, the Victoria Cross for his action in manning a machine gun and holding the Germans back. But that's a story for another day. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little video, a bit of a different slant on the World War I, the Great War. Uh, now, if you did like it, like, share and subscribe. And don't forget, please, to turn on the all notifications button so you can be notified about our videos coming down the line. But now I must give a special shout out and mention to some of my Patreon members, Count Brack. Dracula. Dracula. How's that for a handle? Love it. Sebastian Bender and Michael Swatton. Hey guys, thanks a million and I will see you all soon. Bye for now.